Welcome in. This is your odds checker betting preview for this week's Olympic Games. And Jeff, it's a new format. It's a smaller field. There's a lot to parse out. And oh, by the way, the whole field got turned on its head in the last 24 hours. Are you ready to dive into this? I'm always ready. Uh, you know, a change of pace, Olympic golf, different. But whether it's match play, team golf, anything that changes up the vibe, season is long it can get exhausting uh talking about it so you know I i'm still into it i'm into it too and uh we're not only gonna hopefully find some winners here but we're giving away some olympic swag that's right our friends over at odds checker are giving away an official team usa golf hoodie i've I've seen it. It's it's pretty hot fire. Anytime you get a little Team USA golf uh, on on the on the shirt on the sweatshirt, it's all good. Here's what you got to do to enter: like this video, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and comment below with who you think will be donning the gold medal come Sunday evening. Also, leave your Twitter handle just so they can get in touch with you. And Jeff, um, as soon as I saw this this hoodie, I I threw one in the cart, and it's not gonna it's it's not gonna be by itself. I promise you that by the time. I check out. Yeah, um, I saw the hoodie. It, it's illegal for us to enter, and I went shopping myself. Haven't purchased anything yet, but I'm quite jealous. Nice hoodie. I like all that sort of gear, so I'm quite fond of uh, the hoodie. And good luck to to the to the winner or to the people Absolutely. entering, I should say. Absolutely. And uh, here's what's happened in the last uh, 24 hours or so. Bryson DeChambeau has been replaced in this field by Patrick Reed. John Rahm, the betting favorite after testing positive, is also gone. So, Jeff, this board has been flipped on its head. And now we've got Colin Morikawa, our open champion, as the favorite. He's 7-1 to one at FanDuel and, and uh, points bet and William Hill and bet 365. And it's Xander Shoffley, uh, two points behind, 9.5-1. to one. Those are the two guys in single digits now. I am really let down, Rick. Uh, I wanted to bet Bryson. I thought we were getting quite a break on Bryson at a course that sets up for him. Well, you know, there's a lot of stank around Bryson. I thought a lot of it would have been overblown and would have been fun to see. But yeah, this thing's all been turned on its head. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, according to the odds makers, you know what? They seem to think like 15 guys are now live to win this thing. In yeah. those odds, uh, you know, shorter than 15 to 1, under 20 to 1, the move I would be contemplating, Rick, is, is Victor Hovland. Uh, you know, it was probably going to be him or Bryson for me with a definite lean to Bryson. And I'm all aboard the Victor train, Tom Fazio design. Uh, I believe this can suit what Victor would do quite well. Granted, we're sort of just taking these odds and it's like, I'll pick one of these really good players showing up. I'm picking Victor. Yeah, Fazio uh, lengthened the course about 500 yards. In Japan, a lot of these golf courses have two separate greens. One you play in the summer, one you play in the winter. He combines those into one green. So they're a hair larger than maybe tour average, but you got to be in the right spot. Victor Hovland, obviously a great ball striker. I also wanted to get in on Bryson. And now looking at this board, you know, I... <sighs> It scares me. I think if we were in a vacuum, Jeff, I'd be much more interested in Hideki Matsuyama at 14 to 1 as well as at, at points bet. He's 12 to 1 at William Hill, for example. I, I think I'd be more interested, but I do really worry about the pressure, the 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 opportunity for him to win a gold medal in his home country. Um, man, that would that would eat me up. I don't know how it's gonna do for him. Yeah, this goes uh, multiple ways in my head. Um, you know, firstly, all of these guys, like none of them are going there. Like they all want to win. They all want to win badly. And by that, I mean all these top, top golfers in the world that decided to show up, their time is worth money. The fact that they are over there and playing and wanting to represent their country, they all want it. Hideki, um, you know, he he is the face of, of this event because it is – a home event for him. He will have more course familiarity than anybody else in the field. Mm -hmm. You could make the case that he sort of could still be free rolling since winning the Masters or that he got the Masters and that monkey off his back. But but I agree. I mean, just the sense of pride that will come with this event for Hideki outside of those Koreans who I'm sure we'll be discussing 
Nobody is carrying more pressure than Hideki. Obviously different than those other gentlemen. But of all these really elite players, nobody carries the pressure of Hideki. And by elite, I mean the guys that are being priced under 20 to 1 for the week. Yeah, absolutely right there. We will get to the two South Korean players in this field, but uh, I've already made a click before we get there, and it was on Joaquin Neiman, Jeff. This is a guy who is uh, much longer off the tee than people want to give him credit for. He has added distance. He has shown us he has birdie-making ability. He can go really, really low. The putter stroke, uh, the putting stroke seems to have improved over the past couple of months, and when you get Give him four guaranteed rounds. I think you get an opportunity for him to make a lot of noise. So at 25 to one, which is the number that's being hung right now at points bet on the grid, I'm a buyer there. Is there is there someone in this range, the 20s or so, that, that is moving the needle for you? Listen, once this odds board kind of got turned on its head, it's you know kind of had to look at everything differently. I'm lucky enough to make an early bite on Hideki at, at a larger number, but of these guys, I am still with you, or sorry, on Joachim at a bigger number. I can't quit this guy, Rick. I've been, been on a run of events betting him. I bet him at Memorial. I sense that was probably a week too early or an event too early. Went right back on him. He lost in the playoff. Had an open championship future at triple digits from Christmas time. Obviously, that didn't come through. I'm not getting off the wagon now. I think this course is going to play plenty scorable. I don't think they're looking to drive these guys nuts. I think they're looking to entertain and watch top-ranked golfers in the world make great golf shots and make a lot of birdies. Joachim Neiman, for all of um, the talk, even when I tout him, so much of his, you know, his smooth style, great ball striking, complete player, I don't think we're giving enough attention to how long he has become off the tee. Truly one of the game's best total off the tee players. And I think that will serve him greatly in Tokyo. I hope you're right, because I will certainly uh, benefit from that. Now we get into the 30s, and this is where things start to get really interesting. There's a couple of things going on here. Uh, you know, the 30 to 50 range, I think it's starting to run out of guys that have legitimate win equity. Uh, it includes a couple of really interesting ball strikers like Corey Connors and Tommy Fleetwood. And then it also includes... Both Sung JM, Sung J is 30 to 1 at points bet and bet 365. And then Siwoo, uh, who is up to 66 to 1. That's a number you're going to want to certainly shop across the board. Who, if you're not paying attention, Jeff, uh, the South Koreans have to do mandatory military service. All of their males do. And one way to avoid that and to not have a two year stop on your professional golf career is to prime. medal in your prime, is to medal at the Olympic Games. So you mentioned it earlier. There is no more incentive for these guys. And color doesn't matter. Gold, silver, bronze does not matter. If you get a medal put around your neck on Sunday evening, you're in great shape. So I, I assume that is going to drive a lot of the betting action. Do you agree with this kind of narrative and sentiment around these guys? Before I agree or disagree <laughs> with it, Rick, I do have to say one of the sort of lighthearted moments in the last 24 hours of the Olympic event being turned on its head is that it created a much greater meddling opportunity for those two South Koreans once the Correct. best player in the field leaves and a guy who no one would have been surprised had he won and we all agree was a course fit in Bryson DeChambeau. It's almost like did the South Korea did these guys pay those two to to withdraw? Ha ha! Funny, funny. Um, so we'll, let's address this first. I have bet Siwoo Kim. I bet him at seventy to one before things got silly. The fact that he's sixty six to one. Yeah, can, like, I'll make the case. You know, from a betting perspective, that's essentially that is the same number to me. Um, I think that's a great opportunity. He was seventy when those two were in the field. So using that grid, catching that 66, I think would be great. I have decided to sort of play along with the narrative. And I have picked Siwoo Kim, my partner in crime, Pat Mayo, who I do that podcast with every week, that podcast with. Um, you know, he's a huge Siwoo fan. So many people in our little niche corner of the internet, Rick, uh, love Siwoo Kim. Uh, so I wanted to throw my support behind one of them with my wallet. And it is Siwoo. Woo Kim. 
Siwoo Kim, 66 to 1 at Resorts Casino. You can get him at 65 to 1 at DraftKings. It, it is interesting because, you know, we saw everybody else's number move. That didn't move nearly as much for a guy who has plenty of upside and plenty of incentive. But, but we, we can talk about the, the narratives all day. But do you have any concern, Jeff, about betting these guys outright? as opposed to maybe just to metal, because there could be a small scenario, whether it's a, a small percentage chance that they play to protect second place or play to protect third place rather than trying to keep the foot on the gas and actually win the golf tournament. 100%. That is okay. a concern. This is more of like a FOMO recreational bet in my yes. Olympic action. Um, and being able to do it at 66 to 1 would still allow for a pretty good payout. But you're absolutely right, Rick. Uh, Siwoo could go iron off the tee on a par 5 he needs birdie at to, to, <laughs> to um, tie or get the lead. Because he's sitting on silver. And the worst thing he could do is like duck hook one into trouble and bring a number into play silver everyone is playing for pride and glory this week those two koreans are essentially playing for straight cash mm -hmm. i mean and you know and to be able to keep their lifestyle i guess i mean there's a long list of reasons but those two guys the amount they play how good they are that's a lot of money uh, at a great time in their life to be walking away from and i think they'll do everything they can to to protect it so that is 100 percent a concern and i would even expect the books once they throw props up there's going to be such <laughs> a slashed um number on south korea to meddle in this event because that would be a fun way i guess in in being able to show our support of them before we leave the range though there is someone else i'd like to mention but if let's go on the koreans if you got it no 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 let's let's do it who else do you like here well, I mean, I want to go backwards quickly for a moment and address like Patrick Reed. Going from the, the Open Championship in England to Detroit to Tokyo is one hell of a ride. He's already yes. been quoted as saying, you guys call me Captain America. Like yep. once I got asked to do this, there was no option of turning it down. I love Patrick Reed. Uh but I don't know that I can bet him. I don't know that the course suits what he does well or what where he usually wins. Um, not to say I'm a course expert on what we're going to get, but yeah, I don't know. I think he's an interesting talking point. He might be my favorite player in the field, but my second favorite player in the field from a personal perspective, Rick, I can't ignore now that the field got flipped upside down. I am going to bet Tommy Fleetwood um, to is. win this. He doesn't win in North America. But he seems to make his best efforts around the globe. Uh, Fazio designs have been kind to Tommy. And, hey, take care of Tokyo, right? Get it done in Tokyo, Tommy. He was incredibly emotional when he got the opportunity to join this team because Terrell Hatton had withdrawn in trying to find a guy uh, that I do believe is capable of winning north of 30 to 1. Uh, once you sort of pass those super elite players in this field, I do enjoy Tommy Fleetwood this week. Points bet has him at 33 to 1. FanDuel has him at 31 to 1. You mentioned uh, you not knowing if this is going to be a good course for Patrick Reed. He might not know if this is a good course for him because he's showing up Wednesday evening to tee off on Thursday morning after making the long trip to Tokyo. No practice rounds for Patrick Reed this week. He will have to do it blind. Uh, as we go down to the rest of this field, uh, here, Jeff, the uh, this is where we start to run out, right? I, I think out of legitimate win equity, your 70 to ones are guys like Johnny Vegas, Mackenzie Hughes. You get down into the triple digits. Maybe there's an opportunity to get Sebastian Munoz. I mean, is there is there any plays to be made for guys that are in this range of the betting board? There are a couple guys at this part of the betting board that do have my attention. They both do reside from Belgian, Rick. Uh, the Belgian Bombers, and it's not Nicholas Coltsarts. Thomas Peters, Thomas Dietry. Peters finished fourth in Rio. So, you know, Olympics, it's all about um, doing more than your personal best. So hopefully we can find our way onto a podium there, which would give us a chance going into the back nine on Sunday. And Thomas Dietry. I mean, this guy is, you could say this is an insult or a compliment, Rick. 
He is my European Tony Finau. I love him. Can't quit him. He podiums so much that you feel like you're on the cusp of it. And we're on one of those podium runs for Dietrich at uh, second place in Germany behind Hovland. Lost in a playoff to Minwoo Lee at the Scottish Open. So he's in a nice little run of form for himself. Obviously, it would have been a it would be an enormous ask for a guy who has trouble winning against some of those jabroni European tour fields that get discussed <laughs> week in, uh, week out. But but Thomas Thomas Dietrich, Thomas Peters, probably leaning Peters. And uh, there were some triple digits on Dietrich, but you know, once everything got blown up, I guess so did his number. Those are gone now. 80 to 1 at DraftKings and points bets for Dietrich Peters, 70 at both points bet and DraftKings. And as we start to exit the guys that I think have a legitimate shot at contending, slash winning, slash meddling, whatever you want to call it, I must draw our attention to Joaquin Neiman's uh, country mate, Mito Pereira. This is a guy who, listen, I don't care if it's the Corn Fairy. Uh, the Sunshine Tour, the Challenge Tour. If you find yourself in the winner's circle three times in one season, you get yourself a battlefield promotion. Uh, then you are now essentially catching a heater, playing super well on the PGA Tour, getting his feet wet, getting more comfortable each and every week. And you get an opportunity to go and play four guaranteed rounds in a weak field in a, in a contest like this. I I'm in on that guy. I'm in. Uh, yeah, in many ways, it's hard not to be in an incredibly exciting player. And you said it. Rick alluding to his ability to win. And that Corn Ferry Tour, it's, you can make the case it's the second, maybe third best tour in the world. You win on that tour, you can win anywhere. You win three times in a season on that tour, there's nowhere you could probably win on any tour that that would then really surprise me at that point. Um, so exciting player to see, and he's a guy we're, we're going to be talking about for a long time and hey there's a few players who could be due for a hello world moment that would be a fun one yeah 150 to one Ooh. at Ooh. FanDuel um only triple digits only 100 in other places so keep an eye out for that best number Jeff before we put a bow on the Olympics betting preview is there anybody else we need to chat on I don't, I mean, I guess, listen, I could chat about a lot of these guys, um, but I really just trust your opinion. We didn't get to him in this contest. What do you make of a guy like Rory McIlroy um, this week who, you know, Quail Hollow is his sweet spot. This is a classical golf course that might have some of those features. Uh, Fazio has been kind to Rory in the past. Yeah. He's quietly sitting there at a very short number, but behind the guys that people are expecting a lot more from, I assume. Yeah, I'm lukewarm. And I'm somebody who I, I think as the week goes on, if there's someone I'll grow on, I think Rory is one of those guys. You know, he had made some comments earlier about, uh, you know, there's not much to do in, in kind of Tokyo in the bubble. I'm going to spend a lot of time at the golf course, uh, 12 hours a day, and it's going to allow me an opportunity to kind of work on some things. And that can go in two directions. But Rory, um, you know, if he can lean into his weapon, which is the driver, he's dangerous at a lot of places. I have concerns about his wedge game. I have concerns about the putter, but I'm 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 lukewarm on him at this price, twelve to one on DraftKings. And in closing, I, I I believe a great narrative, or in some ways, just for us in this content space, Rick Xander Shoffley winning, and then we have to spend so much time debating its yeah. merits, its importance. Um, and then what that will do to his number at other big events that have full fields going forward as we are on the precipice of a FedEx Cup. No, I can't I can't spend the time debating is this is this better than a CJ Cup? Is it better than the Greenbrier? Where does this run? I can't I can't do that. Just just finish third or something, Xander. <laughs> Yeah, that's where it that's where it would go. Like at least Justin Rose having won the gold, he already had a major championship. So it just sort of, you know, it added just it's a nice like exclamation point on a career of a player that has won majors, has been a European Ryder Cup stalwart, has won, you know, pretty much everything, even carrying a number 1 in the world ranking at one right. point in his career. So it's such a nice little prestigious footnote on a career like Justin Rose's 
it'll be interesting and you know we'll i'll have to do it next week is debate the merits of whoever gets this <laughs> gold medal and where it stands on their on their resume i love it I love it. This is going to be fun. Uh, I know the field took a hit, but this is still going to be a ton of fun. A lot of guys playing for a lot on the line. And if you want to get in a draw for a Team USA official golf hoodie, I've seen it. It's sick. Very easy to do. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you hit the like button and comment below with who you think is going to win the gold medal. Leave your Twitter handle. That's it. Gets you in the draw. That's Jeff Feinberg. I'm Rick Gabe, and this has been your odds checker betting preview for the Olympics. We'll catch you next time.